Hi there, I'm Lisa, this is Ted my husband, and along with Hans, Air Alsatian, and Bessie, who thinks she's a kangaroo, we are Chateau de Montmagne. March 2020, when Covid spanned the globe and the world began to lock down, we decided to turn our lives upside down and begin the adventure of a lifetime. We threw in our jobs, packed up the car and purchased this 14th century historical monument. You have arrived. Woohoo! We have arrived. <laughs> With no previous experience and just £80,000 budget and a tent as their temporary residence, we plan to transform this abandoned, unloved historical monument into a family home and thriving business. We have so many new skills to learn along the way, but we invite you to come along for the ride. So strap yourselves in and let the fun begin. Okay, so it's that time of year again. The Christmas tree's out. It's Christmas. And as you all know, I love Christmas. But the tree's looking a bit bare at the moment. So um, I think it's time to get some decorations ready. Now, remember last week, I went out with Joe to Jardyland to get some Christmas decorations. And it didn't happen because it was way above our purse strings, so expensive. So I'm going to show you today how to do some cost-effective Christmas tree decorations. Let's start with the first one and get this tree looking beautiful. OK, so the first thing is oranges. Oranges, I think, look fantastic, not just for the tree, but also to make displays, window displays, decorations, reefs. You can use it for so many things. Buy yourself some cheap oranges, the cheapest you can find, and literally cut them into slices. And you want to try and make them all the same sort of thickness, otherwise you'll get some that cook and some that don't. Once you've got them all cut, all you do, lay them out on the baking tray. Now, depending on the thickness, will depend on how long they will take in the oven. All you really have to do is just keep checking them. There's my oranges. Pop them in the oven. Low heat, so about 100. Put it on for an hour, come back, turn them over, put them on for another hour and see how they are. They really need to have just dried out. Once they've dried out, you can then tie a bit of string to the top of them, pop them on your tree or in your decorations. A really good way of just being very cheap. On to the next one. OK, still in the workshop. I don't know how Ted works out here. He's popped off to go see Steve and Joe take something over to them. So I thought um, I'd take the time to use some of his tools. Um, it's so cold in here. It's so cold. Anyway, sticking to my natural theme, if you could go and find a log about so big. If this was Ted now, he'd be telling the measurements of it. I haven't got a clue. But saw off small pieces, probably about, I don't know, what's that? An inch? No, that's about an inch, isn't it? I know, about that thick. I'll show you in a second. You can use a handsaw, but Ted's left this plugged in, so I'm going to use this. Yay! Oh, my hands are so cold. OK, so I've done quite a few of them. Nice round pieces of wood. Like that. OK, let's take them over to my side of the workshop and do a bit of work on them. OK, so I've got my bit of wood here. I've done some pictures here. This is um, pictures of uh, a few of our friends. This is Seren and Vida, a couple of our patrons. A picture we had done with them recently. So what I've done is feathered the edge of the picture on my computer, put it onto a piece of old ancient paper image, um, just so that the brown moulds in with the wood behind it. And um, I'm going to cut that out now. OK, I've stuck it on my bit of wood, just UPVA glue, um, stick it on top. And let's show you now what I'm about to do. 
So I've got my bit of wood, I've stuck the picture on and I've put a bit of glue around the outside. Now, on my floor here, I've got loads of sawdust. So I'm just going to sprinkle the sawdust all over it and hopefully it will just stick to the edges. There you go. It's stuck to the edges. Now luckily I can just brush my sawdust off onto the floor. Now while I'm leaving that to dry, we'll get on to the next project. And we'll come back to that in a okay, moment. I apologise if you're getting flickering on the uh, video, but um, because of these lights in here, for some reason in this workshop, the camera always um, flickers. Anyway, on to the next project. So, the picture you're about to see, this is picture was taken in Jardiland last week when me and Joe went shopping. And these hearts cost 15 euros. So I'm going to try and make them myself. Now, I found some of this plywood, I think it is. It's very thin plywood in Ted's barn. Going to cut a heart shape out, cut the centre out, stick some twigs on. That's it. Simple. Let's go for it. To draw around. Got my heart. Now, it doesn't need to be perfect because you're going to cover it all up anyway. This is literally for the base. One heart. So now I've got to cut the middle bit out. So what I'm going to do is drill three holes in it so I can fit the jigsaw in and then I can cut it out. Okay, so I've got my heart cut out. Don't chuck away your inner piece because we can make another smaller one out of these um, afterwards. But we'll do the bigger one first because this is what we saw in the shop. Anyway, you've got your heart. I've been out foraging this morning with the dogs. It was quite difficult picking up branches without Bessie dragging them off me, but I've just got lots of different size branches. Um, you want lots of different sizes. Don't take them off trees, is one thing I will say. There's enough on the floor, you don't need to take them off the trees. And you want dry branches, you don't want them off the trees because you don't want all the sap coming out of them. They'll be hard. Bessie's just run off with one. Oh, I'm glad she's run off with one of your branches. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and also try and get some different bits. You know, I, I saw um, air pear tree. The branches on air pear tree have got lots of knobbly bits. Quite interesting. Um, curved bits. Anything you can find, as long as it's fallen on the floor and it's dry, then that's brilliant. Cut them into pieces. Now, you don't need a saw for this. You can just break them with your hand, but um, the larger pieces, it's quite nice having a saw. But if you haven't got one, just break them up as much as you can. You'll want small bits, longer bits, lots of different sizes. So we've got our cut out branches, we've got our heart. Next thing we do is start layering up. Now the bottom layer doesn't have to be uniform, but what you do want is your branches to all be the same sort of thickness because you're gonna layer the next set on top of it and you want them to lay nicely and glue nicely. So your bottom layer, use your bigger branches this layer is not really going to be seen, it is just using it as your base. So put them down, find out where places, where, where the um, branches sit nicely, still showing the shape of the heart, but make sure you overlap this wooden base because you don't want that to be seen at the end of it. Glue them on, and then all you do is keep layering, but as you layer, you choose thinner pieces of branches. And... Uh, you just literally crisscross them over. You'll see what looks pretty, what don't, and just put them into different shapes, different angles, but so that you still can see the heart formation. Then as we get to the top layer, this is the layer that's gonna be seen prominently. So you, that's where you want your prettier branches, your ones that have got your little knobbly bits on them, different shapes, make it look a little bit interesting. 
and again just crisscross them over and just put them on and you can layer them as much or as little as you like until you get to a point where you step back and you think yeah I, I like that that's that's really nice okay what do you think baby and remember kids there are no rules there are no rules it's come exactly to what looks good to you don't let anybody tell you even this one <laughs> well that looks good to me Fantastic. Now, does that look the same as the picture Fantastic. I showed you? Um, have we got any glue left? <laughs> <laughs> She's going for the Bessie, big one. You're not She's going for the big one. Branches. Um, I think they look fantastic. I've said before, I think they really do. I think you're, uh, yeah, you know, crafting is your thing. And, and I but does that look like the 15 euro? I think it looks exceptional. You know, the only trouble is at the moment it's covered in glue, but yeah. you'll, you'll disguise that anyway, exactly. won't you? Exactly. You chuck a load of glitter over yeah. it, isn't it? So... It looks really, really good, I think. You could leave it at that. Now, the reason why I haven't worried too much about the glue is because I'm going to cover this up. Um, I'm going to embellish this a lot more than they had in the shop. If you're doing it where you just want the branches, obviously be a bit more careful with the glue because you don't want the glue showing. However, there is always glitter. There is always snowflakes. There's always a bit of spray, anything you like. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So, I love these. I haven't got a clue what they're called, but you can get them from any art supply store. They're a couple of quid for a bag, and it goes a very, very long way. Can you see it? It's like bunched up, I don't know, all curly stuff. It's really cool, but just looks really effective with just little bits around. You don't need much. So all you want to do is get your kind of ends of it, get a hole where you want it, stick some glue in it, push it in so that the ends stick in, hold it in place for a little while, and then you want it just to stick up like that. Well, I do anyway. As Ted said, there are no walls, so it's entirely up to you how you want it. Okay, so you'll get loads of stringy bits of glue, just pull them off. So again, you could just leave it at that. But of course, I'm not going to. I do love to really overdo things a bit. So all I'm gonna do, and this is just, again, really simple. Okay, so I've got some white spray, acrylic spray, that I had just left in the cupboard. Um, if you haven't got any white spray, you can get this on the pound shop. Um, or, you know, your cheap wherever you live. Oh, that's, actually, I picked up the wrong one. That's clear varnish. Don't want that one. <laughs> that way. So, just literally... a little bit of white, just dot it round here and there, and it makes it look a bit like snow! Once that is dried, you can then put some spray glitter on. Again, a couple of quid. But if you haven't got it, it looks nice the way it is. Everybody's got a bit of uh, actual glitter in their cupboard, surely. So if you wanted to, just sprinkle while the white paint is still wet, <coughs> sprinkle a bit of um, glitter on it, and Bob's your uncle. Now, just as a finishing touch, I found uh, some red ribbon that I had in the cupboard. I've made some bows out of it, and um, I'm literally, in one corner, going to put a bow. I also found... ..a twig of this. Um, now, this was actually quite expensive. This was 3 99 for a branch. However, this branch will do probably 10 of them at least because all you want to do is cut some off place them where you want them and um, you need about three or four just little bits of the branch on there a um, couple of bows and that will be finished so like ted said there are no rules find what you've got in your cupboard find what's outside you might want to stick some ivy proper ivy around it i haven't done that today because it's still quite early on if i put ivy on it now it will probably have died off by christmas a bit so um but i might might make some later on a bit closer to christmas with some ivy on it which will be really nice 
But um, yeah, just find what you've got. Make it cheap, make it cheerful, but make it look really good. So this is my finished article. And um, well, I think it looks pretty darn good. I really like it. It's come out well. And considering that is 15 euros in the shop, no way. I think they'd make, they'd make some nice, um, some presents and, and you know. Well, that's they? what I was thinking, that, you, you know, know. It's a lovely thing, because it's the sort yeah. of thing, especially some of my mum. My mum, you know, buys little Christmas decorations, really nice, sort of probably expensive Christmas decorations. But, and people, you know, then you keep them from years and they're like heirlooms, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking really with the nice in-cut. I was going to make some smaller ones because obviously these ones are perhaps a little bit too big for people to hang on their tree, unless yeah. they've got a really large tree, but they're quite good to hang in your windows. Yeah, yeah. Put them in yeah. your windows, you things them, like that. Like if you did two little ones and a big one yeah. in the window, so it'd be quite so nice. So I thought I'd make these smaller ones so we can give them to like Marie Jose and Jean-Pierre. Yeah, and just as a little present. Ian yeah. Sheila, yeah, it's just a little gift from us, handmade, because we, we can't afford to go and buy anything. Yeah, yeah. So. it's the sort of thing that you little could one. give, you know, in a parcel with a bottle or something. Yeah. You know? And it's just pleasant, isn't it? So, yeah. Handmade, handmade. Handmade. Which is obviously appreciated by everybody. Please Should go. be, anyway. Right, now, the any off-cut pieces you got, don't throw away, keep them. Because uh, you'll be able to use them for something. And this one is just big enough for me to cut a circle out of. Circle, well, ish, kind of a circle. But like I say, you're gonna cover it anyway. It doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, so I bought this candle in one of the cheapy shops, 168. I think it was 168. It was either 186 or 168. So that's gonna be my candle for my table decoration. This is gonna be the base for my table decoration. I think I better clean up a bit in here, actually. Ted comes in, he's gonna do his nut. Now, of course, we need the glue gun for this, again. Glue gun is an item that every single person should have in their cupboard. There is no excuse. Ted's coming. I can hear his footsteps. Flipping hell, what a mess. <laughs> I just said I ought to tidy up in here before you get back. You bloody better. <laughs> You bloody better. Okay, so my little round cutout that I had earlier for my off cuts. Now, if you don't have any of this, like I said before, you can just use cardboard. All you need is a base to go round. So you can just use a bit of cardboard. And then all I did was exactly the same with my round one. And put my candle in it. I put a bit of gold leaf, because I had a little bit of gold leaf around the candle. And... Um, I think that looks really, really pretty for a table decoration. Looks a little bit like a bird's nest, but it does look really pretty. I really like it. So, um, yeah, so that's my little candle table decoration. OK, I've got a couple more very quick tips for you. I'm not going to show you how they're made, but very quick tips. Little baubles like this. If you've got any types of, like, wisteria, things like that, this time of year that have died off, you'll find that the vines are very, very pliable. Um, yeah, they're brilliant to use because they don't break at all. So these, if you find, ask your nan, your mum, anybody, see if in their attics they've got some pieces of wool, just round little odd bits of wool that you can use as a template. Wrap it round, just keep wrapping round and round and round, and eventually, you'll get a little bauble like this. You might need a little bit of glue gun to keep it in place. But the great thing is, you can make all different shapes and sizes, different colours, and they're great. They look really good and very, very natural. Last one, pine cones. You get them everywhere. Just go and do a bit of foraging, pick them up, stick a bit of string on the top, hang them from your Christmas tree. And if you love a bit of sparkle like I do, this one here, I just put a bit of glitter on. 
They're brilliant on the Christmas tree. And especially if you've got a big Christmas tree and you want some stuff to really stand out. Wonderful. So that's my tips for Christmas decorating. I hope you've, uh, you have fun with it. Please, if you do go and make them, then send me some pictures because I'd love to see them and see what you can come up with. And um, yeah, I've had a bit of fun today. So I've uh, got one last thing to do. Go and put them on the Christmas tree. We would like to say a huge thank you to everybody that supported us through the Bias the Toll campaign. So far, we have raised £2,686. That accounts to 895 tolls. So we've still got quite a few to go because we need 4,000 in total. But we're getting there. But in the meantime, let's say a huge thank you to those of you that donated this week. Thank you to Beryl Carrington. Monique Jin. Richard Ellison. Tim White, Suzanne Johns, Michelle, <laughs> Berenice Farrell, Jan Wood, Julie W, Elizabeth Wazel, Richard Wassell, Maria Doric, Robert Hessler, Christopher Petro, Geza Nemeth, Maria Nemeth, Mark Nemeth, and Cassie Nemeth. And Ashley Never. <laughs> and Devin Never. And Christina Tomei. Robert Never. Phyllis Bettis. Samantha Never. Brandon Never. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so all. Much. Take care, everyone. We'll see you all soon. Don't forget, if you want to buy a toll, it's in the description. Take care. Bye. Bye.